Yay Networks. Hi there, I'm Mia Sanchez, and you may recognize me as Miss USA and first runner-up at Miss Universe. Well, there is so much more to me than the sash, the crown, the dresses, the chicken cutlets, and the butt glue. Yep, that's a real thing, and we'll get into that later. I am a fourth degree black belt, a women's self-defense instructor, a mother, and a wife to my amazing co-host, Daniel Bucco. We are keeping it real as we dig into relationships, parenting, confidence, self-defense, travel, all the joys and struggles that come with living this beautiful thing we call life. So pull up a chair and throw your hair in a messy bun as we chat with all types of life experts. So make sure to like, follow, subscribe, and look out for Hold My Crown wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Welcome back to another episode of Hold My Crown. Let's go. Yeah, I'm excited. I have officially named this type of episode Crown Confessions. Dun, dun, dun. Wow. Very excited. And do I have a lot? You have a lot of crown confessions. For my time. Mr. USA. With the crown. Yes. So thanks again, anybody and everybody who's here listening to the Hold My Crown podcast. I'm so excited you are here hanging out with us. And today is a crown confession day. We are talking about some stories from my years, Miss USA. And I feel like. We could do hundreds of these episodes because there's so many stories. A future episode may have to be. I'm like a little nervous to say it because people on both sides of the spectrum, but I feel like Trump Tales needs to be an episode. Trump Tales. (laughs) Because he was my boss. For those of you that don't know, he was one of the owners of the organization along with NBC Universal. So he was in the office often and we can do all of that later. That's not the conversation topics today. Today, we're talking about the the controversy of my year. Some people have controversy, some people don't. I had a major controversy where people were calling for my crown to be removed and for me to be called, like, like to get my job taken from me. They wanted me to no longer be Miss USA because of the controversy in my year. Haters. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the like behind the scenes of that and what really happened that a lot of people don't know and I actually haven't shared intentionally because, well, we'll get into all of it in a little bit. First, we want to do book of buttons. buttons, a button that kind of has been pushed but we're going to, instead of talking about one this week, we're going to talk about during my time as Miss USA. Oh. So, sorry if I'm all over the place. I'm just so excited for this episode. We're going to do a little book o button, and then we will get into the episode. Great. All right. I'm going to tell you what the button is for today, and then you are going to describe it. I'm going <laughs> to gonna You're going to describe my button. Got, oh, boy. All right. Oh boy. So, oh boy. Why? Why do you always okay. You did it. You, did, you it. did it. All right. So the book o button and, and this episode is not gonna be like a full complaining episode, but we're starting with a little bit of a complaint because it's a button that was pushed. When you are done being Miss USA and Mr. USA, mm-hmm. they drop you like a tot. Um, you go from having a manager with you at all times and a personal driver and a schedule to absolutely nothing. And I want Daniel to describe that experience from his point of view, because you were with me when I gave up my crown. Daniel was with me as I was no longer Miss USA all the way through the next morning. And you saw my experience with that and you were part of it. So you can describe the book button for the day. And then we'll get into all the crazy stories. Uh, Yeah. So like you said, you have like every day scheduled out for you. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they have a new Miss USA. So all their attention goes to the new Miss USA and on to the next. It's literally what you like were saying in in tears. Like, (laughs) where is everybody? Where's Emily? I cried. Nobody cares about me anymore. What's going on? Emily was my manager. I, yeah. But a lot, I think it's a big deal. I mean, a lot of Miss USA's do talk about this. Mm-hmm. It's like it can be um, traumatic. I was gonna say traumatic. It's a little traumatic. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, just getting through that transition mm-hmm. of this is not my life anymore. But you were very smart about what you did. Um, that I think you passed to a lot of other Miss USA's is your big advice is while you are Miss USA get as many contacts as you can mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so that when you do get dropped like it's hot mm-hmm. potato, 
um, <laughs> you at least have, you know, a, a somewhat of a wave still going and yes. trying to keep that wave uh, alive, rolling. Keep riding the wave. Riding. Yeah. Riding the wave. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. I, I appreciate you sharing your perspective. I'm going to go into a little bit of like the flash memories that I have. So I remember giving up my crown. We have our few moments on stage with like the other title holders taking pictures. We go backstage to start like putting everything away in my suitcase. And I didn't have an actual green room. They had built a green room with like pipes and like <laughs> curtains, you know, and they a were makeshift. a makeshift green room. They were literally tearing down my green room when my suitcase was still in there. Everything was, I had to pack. And so I'm trying to pack things in my suitcase and the walls are literally coming down around me. <laughs> like they are not concerned with me anymore. And then literally and configuratively. Configurative? No, figuratively. Figuratively. <laughs> what the heck? All right, for the record, guys, I am on no sleep. We are both on no sleep. We, well, you got a little more sleep than I did. Okay. While sitting upright and nursing for an hour and a half. And sleeping. Well, I have to use that is a bottle. Not quality sleep. And actually be awake while I'm doing that with oh my gosh. our 17 children. This, I'm still trying to tell my story. I'm just saying. Don't make fun of my configuratively, figuratively. I can say whatever I want and it's be okay with it because that's where my brain is. It's called mush brain. Okay. We are powering through this podcast with our like non-functioning everything. All right. The walls are coming down. And then we- Figured. <laughs> configuratively. That is not a word. Okay. Okay, go. Sorry. Walls are I'm coming done. down. We walk out. My driver that was with me the whole week, actually, he was like almost like a superhero coming in because I look around and I ask, I was like, do we, do, do I have a driver anymore? Do I have someone to get me back to my hotel room? They're like, no, sorry, we didn't schedule anybody for you. Like no one, no one, like, do I have to call an Uber? I just gave up my crown now to call an Uber. But, um, you no, know, the driver like saw me and he was like, I can still take you home. It was just out of the kindness of his heart. Wow. And then the thing where you were talking about when I cried, the next morning I woke up and I had adjoining rooms with my manager and I walk over and I open the door and I look into her room and it's empty and her suitcase is gone. And that's when it like really hit me. Like, They're gone. Like no one <laughs> is calling me. No one wants to know if I'm okay or if I need anything. Um, and then I went back to Daniel and I just cried. Yes. Yeah. So, you know. Which, in their defense, I mean, obviously, the feeling is they don't care, but their job is literally to. They have get to take up care of the next Miss USA. Right, I get it get now. I'm right. on the outside almost 10 years later. I understand. Right. But in the moment when you have had someone literally with you for an entire year, and then it's just like, bye. It just, it, it's really. Bye, Felicia. It hits you hard. But I obviously get it now, and I'm always, like, excited for the next Miss USA. Love welcoming someone else into the sisterhood. Um, it's just like a – it just hits you. All right, that was my button. It just kind of – whoa. When I was in in it, it really felt weird and kind of – I want to say pushed me the wrong way, but we're not good at our phrases. That's not what it is. Don't bring me into it. <laughs> I have great phrases. It's I'm not pushed. It. It's um, rubbed me the wrong way. That's what it was. All right. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, we are like this is teenagers. teenagers. We're, this is crazy. Okay. We're going to take a little Rub break. The... I actually, while we're taking this break, I have to go put my babies down for a nap. And then we're going to come back. Me? We Am have to I put, your baby that you're putting down for a nap? We have to put I our, need to our sleep. children down for a nap. And then we're going to come back from the break and get into the controversy and like two or three other fun stories from when I was Miss USA. And then we'll wrap it up. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. This show is sponsored by Better Help. It is so important to learn to make time for things that make us happy. I do that every single day, every single week by taking care of myself, whether it's hair care, skin care, working out, and of course, spending quality time with my friends and family and my sweet children. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. 
I love therapy for so many reasons. I use therapy as a tool in my life to be able to work on my relationships with, of course, my husband, my children, my friends, and my family. And it also helps me just work through a variety of situations. And I identify in therapy things that I can do, tools that I can use to just live a happier life every single day. If you are thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com dot com slash hold my crown today to get 10% off your first month. That's better help H E L P dot com slash hold my crown. Welcome back from the break guys. We are getting into all the crown confessions of the day. The subject of today, the main subject, which we're actually starting with the main subject today, is the controversy when I was Miss USA. My my controversy of my year. Everybody has a little something something that oh, people dang. get mad about. Um, and then we have some other fun stories for you as well. Daniel, can you tell the audience what was my controversy? What? What? Huh? Huh? What? Why? Okay. You're part of this podcast with me. I, I have to bring you into the conversation I, a little yes, bit. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the controversy was, what's the uh, pageant term for it? State hopper. State hopper. Mm-hmm. Isn't there another one? Carpet bagger. That's, what I, that's the one I was looking. Carpet bagger. And that's is what, what they called me. They called you a <laughs> carpet bagger. What? Like, where does this even come from? I we mean, need to. What, we yeah. need to Google. What I know is a it's like bagger? used in political like worlds as well. Like when people would go from one state to another for political reasons. I think. Sure. Yes. So, uh, yes, you were a carpet bagger. Is what they we can say. They state hopper. You. It doesn't or sound state hopper. as weird. That was the controversy at the time. You had to have residency for six months mm-hmm. before you could compete in that state. Correct. And am I telling the whole story? Or just tell, you tell just... me what tell what the controversy was, which is what you're the doing. The controversy now. was uh, you uh, have first of all lived all over the place, mm-hmm. but you had competed for Miss California two or three times. Three times. Three times, and then. Um, have obviously have family in Nevada mm-hmm. and wanted to do your residency there and move there to compete for the chance to win Miss Nevada to go to Miss USA. Mm-hmm. How did I do? You did great. Thank you. Awesome. Yes. So some questions that people may have had over the years are, did you really live in Nevada for six whole months? Did you just show up and win the crown and then go on to become Miss USA? Like, what is the real, real? How did it really happen? How did you really do the whole California to Nevada thing? And that's so. How I'm going to tell you the real. real. I'm joking. <laughs> no, not no. Okay, so this that's is not how it happened. This is what happened. What happened was. <laughs> um, I competed in California for three years. The first year I competed, I got. Second runner up, right? Yes, second runner up. I was little, nineteen old, nineteen year old Nia. I remember in my interview, I talked about working at Victoria's Secret and living in my grandma's house. Like how I got second runner up against Nana Merriweather, who had like went to UCLA and USC and had a charity in Africa and was becoming a doctor. And and Nicole Phelps. Well, now her name is Nicole Phelps. She married Michael Phelps. She was with him at the time, had all these other accomplishments. And I'm like, how did I, at 19 years old, working at Victoria's Secret, I literally, in my interview, this is not the point of the story, but in my interview, I remember telling them like, yeah, women come in and they like pull their shirts up and show us their boobs and want to know what's like, these are the things I talked about in my interview 
that got me second runner up at Miss California out of over 100 people. How? I do not know. They must have just seen the magic, guys. Exactly. <laughs> um, and you were probably just going and telling, you know, stories and being so real besides being I was being so real uh, instead of perfect. Pageant pet. Yeah, I was like, hold my crown. I'm just keeping 100 people. You know, this, yeah. this is what we did in year one. And then I competed two more years. I barely made the top 20 those two years. Even the final year, my third year competing, I was Miss Hollywood USA. I loved like my styling, my war, everything. I was super on point. But that year, there was 133 competitors. No. Yes. 133 competitors. That's so many people. Or was it 300? Three, I thought there was It like was 300. 300 competitors. I'm sorry. Yeah. 300 competitors. And our interview was 90 seconds. So like, how are you supposed to even stand out? So I guess, thank goodness I made the top 20. Could have not even yeah. been pulled into the top 20. But I didn't win. So I moved to Hong Kong. I was like, bye, America. I'm gone. I'm going to Hong Kong, living my life, like working at Disney there. And then I came back and I immediately went to Nevada to establish residency and compete. From the day I moved back and moved straight to Nevada to when the pageant was, it was five months. In my mind, I'm like, no big deal. I'm not moving from California to Nevada. I'm moving from another country to Nevada. And I was like a temporary resident there. I had my residency card, all of that. So I was like, the residency rules probably don't apply if you're coming from another country, right? Well, there was rumblings in the pageant world that if I competed, I did not meet that six-month requirement, they were going to get my crown taken away. So I was like, uh-uh, we, we ain't got time for that. I want to go straight to Miss USA and compete at that stage. I don't want to win and have my crown taken away and be immersed in all this controversy I was trying to avoid. Pageant controversy. Girls are so nice. I think it's probably like the stage moms, really. <laughs> I don't think it's a, I think it's the crazy stage moms. Yeah. I really oh, think that's sure. probably more for of what sure. it was. Um, so I decided not to compete. It was my first year since I started doing pageants that I didn't compete. So I went, I watched the pageant, I cheered on my friends that were competing, and my residency was already established at that point. I was living in my family member's house at that point, but I spent a lot of time in California. And after watching the pageant, being there for a few months, I was like, I'm coming back to California for a little bit. I had so many friends in LA. I was still working in Anaheim. Um, so I moved in with some friends, had some roommates. That's when I met Daniel, like literally a month after I moved to LA, we were dating and Within, I would say within the first month or so, I was like, by the way, I'm moving back to Nevada because I have this pageant I have to do. So I kind of got him on board, made sure he was aware of that right away. The actual time that I was living and working like every single day without a lot of time in California was about four and a half months. Mm -hmm. But I had had residency established long before that. I you know, had community there. I had church friends. I had a church community. I was volunteering at church. All those things had been established long before, but like actually not doing the driving back and forth in between California and Nevada as often and mostly spending probably 80, 90% of my time. That was about four and a half months. So technically my residency was established a long time before, but four and a half months or like that's when I, I quit Disney. Like I was like, I'm all in. I can't be doing this back and forth thing. So right. that's that. Anywho, that's all the lead up. There, you got to... You know. All things. Oh, yeah. I, I moved out of family's house. I moved in with friends. I had roommates right. again, like paying my own rent, doing all the things. So like living, working. I had a job. I was a nanny. I had a modeling agency I was working with. I doing all the things like full on. More than most. More than most. Most just get like a P.O. box and like, hey, I'm a resident. Right. So, yeah. Anywho, now you can compete in two states in one year. So... Those rules Times are have changed. long gone. So the controversy was, because I want to kind of talk about what happened in the Fox interview. Oh, yeah. That was fun. So it was my media week when you're Miss USA. You have a big old media week. You're waking up at 4 a.m. So you're, you won Nevada. I won Nevada. I won USA. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I had a media week. You're up at 4 a.m. in hair and makeup. You are in like all across like Good Morning America, like huge, huge shows every single day. So the biggest. I, the biggest shows. I was at Fox this day. The interviewer was so nice. She was like so sweet before the camera started rolling. <laughs> oh my gosh, congratulations on being Miss USA. How are you feeling? Oh my, I'm so happy for you. And then the interview started and she was like an attack dog. It was she insane. I, Ice I haven't seen cold. the interview but I remember being so 
calm, cool, and collected because I could speak from truth about all of her questions. No, you killed it. Um, but it was what started the controversy that hit like national levels. Like you'll see if you like Google it, don't Google it. Cause we don't want to get the SEO higher, but it's, um, it's on like people magazine and like good morning America, like all that these everywhere. huge publications covered it. That's all the rest of my interviews were about after the Fox one broke. Nobody else would ask me about women's self-defense and like all these things I was passionate about. They just wanted to know, if I was a carpetbagger. <laughs> so that was annoying. But this woman in the interview, she would ask me things like, well, I I heard that you have an agency in LA. I said, yes, it's at LA and Las Vegas agency. I worked in both places. And, and then she would ask, well, I heard that you worked at Disney. Yeah, of course I worked at Disney. I loved it. I almost got fired because I was late or not showing up for my shifts. I ended up right. quitting like the day before they were going to fire me because it's a lot to drive four hours to get to work. <laughs> so I would either be late or just not show up sometimes, which obviously is not good. But I wanted to hold on to my job at Disney as long as possible because I loved working yeah. there. So there was lots of things that she brought up as proof. And I'm like, do you want to bring up my, my source where says, my bills my go source. and where I pay my rent check and my church community that I've been volunteering at, the children's ministry? Like, what else do you, you don't want to talk about any yeah, of that? Right. Of course. So yeah, that that was that. And that's all I got asked about in interviews. And then the audio clip that kept getting played over <laughs> oh, and I over. About this. Oh, Do no. you want to tell them what you know oh, of it? No. I obviously experienced the moment, the moment, but like, <laughs> sorry, it's terrible. Okay, <laughs> obviously I'm not <laughs> from Nevada. <laughs> And they were quizzing me, like, what? <laughs> what is your state bird? Like, after, yeah, like, they were, like, literally coming what, for the jugular. What's the mascot and, of UNLV? I, I didn't go to UNLV. I don't know. like, But I think I did answer that correctly. And they yes, were just drilling yes. me on all these questions. And then they were like. Then it, <laughs> it came, what's the capital of Nevada? And I knew the capital. I literally blanked. went, um... <laughs> Um, I said, um, twice for sure. They edited it to be, um, 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 like they edited it to like, be like five or six times. I yeah. said, um, um, and I was like, Carson, no, Carson you were, city. You were like, that, it's, it's like that guy that was Carson on Daily, TRL, TRL, but obviously you have to That's have you ways to. to remember things when you're in school. And I learned all the state capitals in like fifth grade right so in my mind i'm like nevada carson daily carson okay Car you know like all the things so they so didn't like, like that she doesn't even know the capital of the her state own that state. she's representing it was it was drama yeah. and i literally had to take myself off from watching any media that had to do with me reading anything yeah, the, social people media were people were hating vicious. vicious yes it was so mean yeah and then it's, you know, but a new cycle is two weeks. So everybody was telling me, just write it out, write it out. Paula Shugart, though, if, if anybody is a pageant fan, you know who she is. She it was the president of the Miss Universe organization for 20 plus years yeah. and just, just retired, retired this, this last year. She was like, Nia, we got to put this to bed. Like, what do you have? How can we prove your residency? It was like my driver's license. Like, I've literally been there for so long. So she got my driver's license. And I have, maybe this is a embellished memory where I'm in seeing it more than what it was. But I literally feel like I have a, a memory of her holding my driver's license, like dancing through the office, <laughs> running to the fax machine. She put it down the fax machine and she printed it like 200 times its size or something. So it like filled up the whole You're paper. And she's me. like, I have proof. We can just send this to all the people and they'll stop complaining because people were writing into the organization being like, she doesn't deserve to be Miss right. USA. She we cheated. Take her crown away. We need her crown to be taken away. And they were demanding it. So when she finally got my driver's license with like, you know, more than a year's right. date and right. all that kind of stuff, she could put all of that to rest. But yeah. That was my controversy. There have been Miss USAs with a lot more controversy than that. Yes. I'm not going to say it because if you know, you know, and if you don't, you can Google it. There you go. We'll just leave it. We'll leave it there. Um, we have other fun stories, you guys, but I wanted to dive into the real, real, like the details of all of that because I've never really spoken about it except yeah. to say like, yeah, I was a resident, so leave me alone. In such a long time. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. And it's just funny because people will still bring it up and I'm like, really guys? 
it's been 10 years. I did so much during my year to like work hard as a Miss USA to represent amazing organizations yeah. and move my platform forward. So why do you want to bring that up? But yeah. Anywho. Anywho. Moving on. You All were right. the best. You were oh, the best there I, ever was. I tried hard. I don't know about the best, but I definitely was grateful to be Miss USA. You, These are like fun things to talk about now that we're so far removed. Um, but I want to talk about like fun memories as well. So this is not a fun one. Do you remember when people would like body shame me or no? No. Okay. I remember it because I was very sensitive because it's my body. Um, body shame you that I gained weight. you were freaking killing it. Thank you. I probably gained... I fluctuated a lot when I was Miss USA. This goes all the way back to I could barely pay my rent when I was living in Nevada, like just working, like making enough to pay rent and groceries and gas. And like, that was it. So when you become Miss USA, they're like, whatever you want, put it on the grocery <laughs> list. <laughs> we'll order whatever you want. So I was like, yes, <laughs> give me some waffles. Give me some Nutella. Nutella. Give me <laughs> all of the things. I was yes. living my best life. Yes. I was like, what else can I order? And Gabriella, Miss Universe, is like, I'm going to get some green juices <laughs> <laughs> and like protein waffles. Like here, you know, order these. They're like a little healthier, you know, right. like trying to help me out. Um, so we'll just talk about that experience of like the fluctuation. As a title holder, you are put on this pe pedestal of being like, quote unquote, perfect or perfect in so many people's eyes. And I was definitely not that. And so I feel like people felt open to criticize when my weight was fluctuating. I gained some weight. So strange. After being Miss USA, not a lot, but I was like, you know, worked really hard to be lean and tone when I was competing on stage. Yeah. I tell them- Because there's an on stage weight. Exactly. That's it's what like I, I tell the girls that I coach. Like, if you have a desired fitness level that will make you feel really comfortable on stage, absolutely work hard to get to that. For sure, I need you to be strong, not skinny, lean and tone and sexy, not skinny, but know that that's not your forever weight. That's a performance weight. A bodybuilder is not at 100% all the time. There's not stage. at 3% body fat. Exactly. So same round. when you're competing. It fluctuates for like crazy. Exactly. Yeah. So I gained some weight. I love my Nutella. I literally have memories of having a waffle coated in Nutella in my workout clothes in the elevator, like going, <laughs> eating my Nutella as I'm going to the gym for you, my training sessions. Your blood type is Nutella. Yes, exactly. You eat Nutella. Not anymore. <laughs> Metabolism changes as you grow older. Oh, but Lord have um, mercy. there was a time when I was, you know, we're now leading up to Miss Universe, and I remember seeing like, more gym sessions on the calendar because <laughs> they send you a calendar at 5 p.m. every night and you know what your next day is. Sometimes it's office hours. Sometimes it's an appearance. Sometimes it's interviews, whatever it might be. Um, and, I, and I started to see more gym sessions get put on the calendar instead of like you have a gym membership. You can go whenever you want. It's like you are now scheduled. So what was your time period? What was the gap between mini, winning Miss USA and competing for Miss Universe? About six months. Because it changes right. every year for right. like, you know. Depending winning. on when the pageants are. So you are. had six months. I had okay. six months to gain weight and lose it again. <laughs> <laughs> so I did all of that. Gained the weight, lost it again. Boom, boom, boom. Got And it's not like for me it wasn't about losing weight. I wanted to feel tone and like really strong and lean and sexy at Miss Universe. Yeah. And even – what my goals were, even Gabriella, my the Miss Universe that was living there when I was getting ready to compete, she would tell me, you don't need to be aiming to be so lean, Nia. Like, you need to be sexy and a woman at the same time. Like, have curves. And I, I'm glad I heard that from her because yeah. I had this other ideal of, like, what I needed to be physically. But the bigger moments of body shaming are, were at the end of my year. I gained back some weight. So I probably competed around 120. I gave it my title around 130. So, like, about a 10-pound difference. And, um, gosh, people were so mean. People were saying that clearly I was pregnant, that I was a – bad role model because I got pregnant while I was Miss USA and they'll just see the results of my being a bad person <laughs> when I have a baby in nine months. Like all these things, it was all over. And it got to the point that my dad saw it and he called me and he was like, do you see people are being really mean? Why can't the organization take these comments down? Like they need to get yeah. these removed. Like it was like, it was pretty vicious. Cut to <laughs> keyboard warriors. Yeah, though, I mean, I'm it. postpartum now. So obviously it's something totally different, but like, what I would give to have that 
heavier body, uh, like 130, you know, at this point, but it oh, is after it is. like now pregnancy season babies right after and, having yeah. three children Actual in two years pregnant. right yeah. yeah yeah so yeah um it was just wild how people feel so confident being so mean on the internet yeah and i wonder if they would really say that to your face i feel like they wouldn't to my no, face no you know it's their own but, insecurities and they feel entitled once they're mm-hmm. hiding behind a keyboard to Say whatever they want. Yeah. And something I've learned now is to just appreciate and love my body for where it's at. Yeah. And, um, you know, no matter what stage it is, even whether it was 130, 140, 1 million pounds, I feel like I am right now. But let's tell a happy story of Miss USA. Real quick. Amazing. But but real quick before Mm -hmm. this, I do want to say this because it does obviously... Uh, affect especially women Mm -hmm. and especially in the pageant community. Mm -hmm. I remember you telling me stories of girls straight up just passing out on stage because their manager or whatever said, don't you don't eat or this is all you literally told them to not eat or blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, and if you pass out, great. They'll just put an IV. Give in you an IV. And we could go into go. all these Miss Universe stories because that's a lot of the com- countries. At least when I was competing ten years ago, may not be as prevalent now. But yes, yeah. those stories are real. And and to let everybody know, anybody that's interested, we can dive more into any stories later. Y'all just drop it in the comments on Instagram what you want us to talk about. But. I was eating six meals a day when I was competing because my trainer was like, you are going to be strong and sexy instead of we're not, we're not trying to get you skinny. I was weight training for 45 minutes a day and I was doing cardio and I was eating literally six meals. There was times where I was not hungry, but we wanted to keep my metabolism up and put nutrients right. in my body. So that's the way that I got to feel confident on stage, and I do not endorse anybody doing it any other way. You better yeah. be strong and sexy and feel good and not starve yourself because yeah. that's not healthy. It's terrible for your body, terrible for your mind. It's terrible in, in all the ways. So, Truth, yeah. truth. We could tell tales of Miss Universe contestant stories. That's that's for another day. Yeah. All right. Um, what else you got? Funny moments when I was Miss USA. We'll bring a little Trump tale into this one. Just a little one. Just a little sprinkle. Um, Are we talking about Donald Trump? Maybe. Um, <laughs> so when I was Miss USA, you and your mom and dad were in town. And we had a whole itinerary plan. And I had asked for the oh, day off. yes. So we yes, were going to go yes, to the Brooklyn yes. Bridge. We had all these plans, and I get a text message or a call, I don't remember, earlier in the day. And they said, hey, we need you to be ready for something maybe in the afternoon. We'll let you know if it's happening. And I'm like, we have an itinerary. We got things to do. You know, it was right. it was a busy day. And then a few hours later, we need you to – we're, we're going to use you. We need you to be ready. Um, look really nice, but something that you, that's okay to get wet. And I'm like, what is happening? Like, where am I going? And they wouldn't tell us. I'm like, can you just tell us what we're doing so we can be prepared? Yeah. It was myself and Miss Universe, Gabriella. And then they're like, no, we can't tell you. And as Miss USA, I mean, you are on call 24-7. 24-7. You are at their beck and call. Right. You can make plans, but it doesn't mean that you get to do your plans. (laughs) Exactly. Um, Even if, like, you're in another state, they'll be like, we need you. Come on back. Like, literally beck and call 24-7. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll try to throw something on real quick, do my hair and makeup. (laughs) And they put us in a car. They drive us around the city block or so. And we're at the base of Trump Towers. And I was like, what is happening? And there's like security and we're trying to figure it out. We get in an elevator, myself and Miss Universe Gabriella. We have our sashes and everything that's official Miss USA and Miss Universe business. We still don't know what's going on. We don't know if we're going to see Donald Trump. We know we're at his building, um, but we go all the way to the roof. And so apparently his penthouse has roof access. So we're Trump on Tower. the of Trump Tower. So, and this is where he lives, lived. Right. The, you know, New York City. New York City, Fifth Avenue. Yeah. And so we're just admiring this like beautiful view. You can see all of Central Park. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. And then they <laughs> bring out water bottles with 
the Trump logo on it because everything is Trump, 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 you know, everything. Mm -hmm. And they start filling up a giant bucket and then come to realize we're doing the ice bucket challenge. So they're filling up a bucket (laughs) with all the Trump water bottles and then they're pouring ice in there. And then we're just standing there with these giant, like heavy for like, you know, young women, these are really heavy buckets filled with ice water. Each of us Good have our own bucket. Good thing you're working out a lot. Good thing I was strong. <laughs> and um, Trump does his whole spiel. Sorry, hit your mic. His whole spiel about how his hair is real, yada, yada, yada. And we do the ice bucket challenge on Trump. So yes, you that was fun. dumped ice water on Donald Trump's yeah. head. Fun fun times. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Who can say that? <laughs> <laughs> we love you guys. <laughs> we love you. Thank you so much for listening to the Hold My Crown podcast. Loved having you guys on our Crown Confessions episode. We have an episode every single week, so make sure you come back and listen. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with a friend. See you next time. Yay Networks.